In this video, I want to share a click I got about how coming to conclusions is actually violence. I welcome you with love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shinityanda Paramashivam. In today's video, I want to share about a click which uh, uh, got very handy for me recently, I got. And uh, it started uh, back then when Swamiji uh, introduced uh, to me, because I didn't know anything about that before, but the um, concept, I don't know if concept is the right word, but we'll say the concept of Varkyata Sadas. What is Varkyata Sadas? It is basically a spiritual debate. But it is not a debate with the purpose of showing that you have better knowledge than somebody else and expressing that knowledge and declaring supremacy over uh, the people uh, with you who are also part of the debate. No, that is not uh, Varkyata Sadas. Varkyata Sadas is basically sharing the deepest cognition we have about life and the universe and listening to the cognitions of others and raising each other's understanding. Basically, if there is a winner in a Varkata Sadas, it is basically the person who is able to bring the understanding of everybody to a higher level. The person who shares a cognition which literally enlightens people around him, people who are part of the Varkata Sadas, this is basically um, how we can say we can declare winner of Varkata Sadas. One of the amazing stories which really impacted me about that, it is obviously uh, the Varkata Sadas, the famous Varkata Sadas in the life of Adi Shankaracharya, who revived the Hinduism that we know today uh, centuries back. And he was basically uh, established in the uh, thought current of Advaita, which is uh, beyond duality. And he did a Varkata Sadas with somebody who was a leader in the uh, thought current of Advaita, uh, of duality. So they were sharing their cognitions about life. And basically, Adi Shankaracharya won the Varkata Sadas. And how did they know that he won the Varkata Sadas is because they put a flower garland to both of the participants, Adi Shankaracharya and Mandana Mishra. And uh, these flowers were very sensitive to heat, meaning that when there is too much heat, they wither away. And, and uh, basically, Adi Shankaracharya won the debate. Why? Because, won the Vargata Saras, because um, his flower garland remained intact and the flower garland of Mandana Mishra withered away. Why? Because when you do not have a complete understanding about existence, you will feel threatened to a certain extent about the outside world. And when you are threatened, there is heat generated inside your body, a form of restlessness, a form of agitation, which ends up generating heat. So when there's too much heat inside your system, because you are constantly experiencing some form or generating some form of powerlessness within yourself because your understanding, your cognition about existence is incomplete, then uh, the heat in your body raises and the flowers wither away. So like that, Adi Shankaracharya was able to share his cognitions without his body temperature uh, moving, whereas Vandarishra, the more he was getting into the Valkatasas, the more heat was being generated inside his body and at some point uh, the flower garland withered away. So that was a very powerful story for me and uh, it really impacted me a lot. And Swamiji was constantly inviting us to do uh, Varkata Saras. We did one recently and we are doing on a daily basis. For those who are interested, male bodies, uh, you can leave a comment below or get in touch with me on Facebook. The link is in the description below for my Facebook. And um, we do a Varkata Saras on a daily basis with 
we talk, we contemplate on one powerful cognition that Swamiji shared with us about life, and we share the cognitions we have about it to listen to others, people, cognitions, and basically get more and more understanding and more of a complete experience of this powerful cognition shared by Swamiji. And uh, during the Vakata Sada, Swamiji always says, it is not about coming to conclusion, it is all about cognition. So I have been constantly contemplating on like, what is the difference between a conclusion and a cognition? And this is basically what I realized so far. A conclusion is violent. A cognition is non-violent. And this is why I am, uh, this is how I realized that, or this is why I'm making this statement, because um, when you have a conclusion, you come to a frozen understanding which does not give any space for expansion. And life is all about expansion. Your inner space is constantly expanding. The universe is constantly expanding. Expansion is one of the expression of consciousness and everything is coming out of super consciousness. So expansion is within everything. When you go against expansion, you are violent. When you go along with expansion, you are non-violent. So a conclusion, most of the time, we get into some form of um, life negative thought current, some kind of withdrawal kind of space, um, a kind of, a, it's a depression actually, meaning that it's, a, it's, a, it's a basically a desire not to expand because of whatever life negative thought current you cherish. And that is why Varkata Sadas, it is not about answering other people's doubt. It is about answering the questions that you have deep within yourself, the fundamental questions about life. So let's watch a quick clip of Swamiji giving us a few clicks about, um, about that. Few basic sacred secrets about life. What is life? What far life? More and more you try to seek answers for these questions, you become seeker. More and more you try to answer these questions for others, you become philosopher. But these questions remain untouched forever because each one has to discover the answer inside them for these questions. For the outer world comforts, you don't need to reinvent whatever is already invented. You can use the same thing. But for the inner world enlightenment, you need to discover your religion individually and independently. These questions, what far life is, what is life, what far life, these questions, raise the intensity of life in you, brings authenticity to your living. I discovered answers to these questions inside me. But I will not do the mistake of giving you answer. I will give you the process through which you can discover the answer within yourself. Please understand, if I give you the answer, it will not be your own answer. Any philosophy given ready-made, like a teaspoon feeding, is not going to become part of you, is not going to be enlightening you. It may be a philosophy. It may be a bookish knowledge. Maybe you can be like a librarian 
sitting with it but it is not going to become part of your life my answer to this question what is life what for life will no way be useful for you you need to find your own answer i can only give you the process the process i am offering to all of you to find answers for the basic questions of life is unclutching you do not need to be fanatic or rock solid conclusion to live your life understand binary logic teaches you unless you come to the final conclusion don't proceed but don't you understand in any field you cannot come to final conclusion knowledge cannot be dead in any field if knowledge the final conclusion is reached then that field is killed if somebody tells you this is your god only one god there is no other god your consciousness is killed your religious progress is destroyed your spiritual growth is over understand listen in any field come to cognition not to conclusion cognitions can be upgraded when more powerful cognitions come you can raise to that whether in the outer world or in the inner world understand conclusions kills you cognitions keeps you alive cognitions helps you to grow further and further and further conclusions kills you once for all possibility for evolving is kept alive when you cognize when you cognize first thing do not always be arrogant to come to conclusion and then start the actions come to cognitions and start the actions because the cognitions will get upgraded if you come to conclusion and then act after acting sometimes even if you find the conclusion is not complete you will not feel like upgrading yourself because you already spent lot of time lot of work you have done on that conclusion you will feel oh god i am already married to this conclusion and lived so many years now why unnecessarily rock the boat anyhow life is over let me somehow pull it drag it on that will be like a indian marriage so yes so basically it's all about grasping what a cognition is in order to grasp what a cognition is what I, a cognition is what i realized is you have to be able to see the cognitions we che- you cherish um and the thing is that we don't many conclusions we have about life which are not in tune with reality but we take them as conclusion and we operate from them so we have to drop these conclusions and grasp the cognition which will allow us to come back to be in tune with the reality and start to continue to expand in the way we are 
uh, we in the way we want to expand in the in in the way we are inspired to expand. So, what we do most of the time when we are when we have these life negative thought currents, we just want to close the deal and move on. This very thought current of like, okay, this is too much. I just want to finish this and move, do something else. You know this. This thought current of just, you know, you want to get rid of something. That's a violent thought current. That's what I realized. And that's what a conclusion does. Okay, we'll just label, we'll just freeze this into a frame, which is the conclusion, and we'll just move to something else. No, this is not how life is supposed, this is not how life happens. So, but that's what we do as human beings, and that's why we are stuck in ego. Ego is basically a party of conclusions, a bunch of conclusions we have about ourselves, about life, and we are completely frozen in them, and we operate with life with them, and naturally we manifest all kinds of struggles and suffering because life has no conclusions, life only has cognitions. So basically what I, what I realized is that a cognition is, a, is an understanding which opens up more and more space within yourself. For instance, recently Swamji shared, if there is a second, there is possibility of infinity. Possibility of infinity is a cognition. It is not a conclusion. Why? Because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, there's no, it's not frozen. You know, possibility means every, anything is possible. Expansion can happen in any possible way. So it is not a conclusion, it is a cognition. So I'm realizing that in order to be blissful, to come back to our space of natural bliss, the space of Paramashivoham that Swamiji is constantly uh, aligning us, initiating us into, is about coming to conclusions and not be frozen in, uh, coming, coming to cognitions and not be frozen in conclusions. Uh, but we have the habit of always coming back to a conclusion. So we have to catch ourselves doing that. And we have to realize that this is not, uh, this is not helping us coming to conclusion. It is not helping us to experience more bliss. It is not helping us to, to stop experiencing suffering. And we have to look into what is a cognition? What are the cognitions I'm operating from? And how can I cherish more and more powerful cognitions? So uh, that's what I wanted to share in this video. It's a big thing for me and I, I'm still contemplating on it, but I can say that, you know, what is the cognition? What is the conclusion? I would invite you to also look into it in your life and identify what, conclusion, what conclusions you have about life, what are the cognitions you have about life, and what is actually even the difference between a conclusion and a cognition? Contemplate on it. And the more you contemplate, the more we have seeking, the more these truths, uh, life reveals more and more about itself to us. So uh, also write if you have conclusions or cognitions which you have realized you're cherishing and you want to get rid of or you want to cherish, you can feel free to write them in the comments below. I would be interested to listen to the kind of cognitions you operate from as you live your life and uh, what kind of perhaps conclusions you had which you dropped because you realized that these conclusions were actually limiting us, they were shrinking you and, uh, and you decided to stop shrinking. So with that being said, uh, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon in order to be notified when I upload videos, I upload on a regular basis. And uh, if you feel enriched by this content, if you feel it is useful for you and your life and to intensify your seeking or perhaps bring more clarity, to, uh, to what Swamiji shares or strengthens your experience and your feeling connection with Swamiji, that is amazing. So, uh, so share that with your friends and uh, don't forget to like and again comment below. I will see you in the next video and I'm again thanking you for watching these videos. It is very much appreciated. Let us stand for Hinduism, share these cosmic principles, live them, cognize them, live them, share them, and, and, and remove the violence from the world by living non-violence and by enriching others with more and more non-violent cognitions about life. So thank you very much again. Nityananda. Rudraya Gora, 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 Rudraya Gora,
ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಂದರುದ್ರಾಯ ಚಾಂದರುದ್ರಾಯ ಪ್ರಚಂದರುದ್ರಾಯ ತಾಂದರುದ್ರಾಯ ಶೂರರುದ್ರಾಯ ವೀರರುದ್ರಾಯ ಭಾವರುದ್ರಾಯ ಭೀಮರುದ್ರಾಯ ಆತಾಲರುದ್ರಾಯ ಈತಾಲರುದ್ರಾಯ ಸುತಾಲರುದ್ರಾಯ ಮಾತಾಲರುದ್ರಾಯ ಸಾತಾಲರುದ್ರಾಯ ತಾಲತಾಲ 